I'm feeling pretty lucky today because I'm sat in beautiful sunshine next to a hundred year old ancient estate lake. I'm led to believe that this place holds some incredible carp. Just recently I had a message from a young man called Aeson. He contacted me through Instagram. He said, do you want to come and fish with me at my local estate lake? He showed me some pictures of the fish that he'd been catching. I met up with Aeson and his dad. Uh, they've showed me around this beautiful lake and yeah, I mean, the place is stunning. Of course, very old bodies of water that have you know, been around for a long time, they've had a chance for silt to build up on the bottom. Silt is basically organic matter or runoff from fields that builds up on the bottom of a lake. It's often quite soft slimy and can actually really affect the way that you target carp when fishing on these sorts of silty venues. We began setting up and getting ready for our session. Ace was quick off the mark, landing one of the lake's small commons. Well, we're in the swim that we've chosen now. You put out some bait last night, didn't you? Yeah. Thankfully, my little trusty helper was baiting up last night in preparation for our arrival today. And uh, the baiting work paid off by the seam of things. Managed to catch two already this morning before I'd even got my rods tied up and cast out. But yeah, um, probably we'll introduce a little bit more bait uh, with the uh, spawn. And I'll run through some stuff like the rigs and sort of the hook baits and stuff that we're using a bit later on. But yeah, things have got off to a good start. Two fish on the bank for Ace and uh, nothing yet for me. I'm hopeful though. Upon arriving at any water, you're gonna to want to try and locate the fish. I do this by basically watching the water. Time spent watching the water is never wasted. If you set up in the first swim that you come to and just chuck the rods in, you're quite likely missing out on a shoal of fish that is potentially in the next swim down. So it's definitely worth a look around to try and spot some signs of fish. On a silty old lake like this, the fish, uh, as they're digging and feeding in the bottom, can disturb bubbles uh, in amongst the silt. And those bubbles will pop on the surface and that can give away uh, the location of the fish. Also, when they're stirring around in the mud, that mud can like billow up off the bottom and make the water look a little bit more murky than other places. So if you walk around the lake and you look in, you go clear, clear, clear. Oh, this bit's really murky. There's probably been fish activity in that area. Well, it's time to put in some bait. I knocked up a mix of pellet, some crushed up boilies, some sweet corn. Three of my favorite baits, to be honest. If there was lots of bream in here, or a small tench or something, this mix would probably end up getting a lot of those in the swim. Uh, so if you were after carp, you might want to go more heavy on the boilies and maybe leave the, uh, leave the pellets and corn out. But I'm going to put in a few spoms of this. It's quite clear that there's good numbers of fish in here. Uh, Ace has had a couple of fish already. His dad told me that they have caught like good numbers of fish even through the winter. So whilst I wouldn't normally be spomming very much bait out in, uh, in early March, seems like today might be the best way to go. Here we go. I've hooked into my first fish of the session. I was not paying any attention. And uh, 
Aysen was just like, you're in, you're in, you're on. I was like, no, I'm not. I didn't hear a beep. It's the first carp, first like proper carp I've, I've hooked in a little while. I've mostly been pike fishing lately. So it's nice to remember what it feels like to hook a good carp. There we go. And it's in. With my first carp in the net, I sat down to tie up a new rig. Almost instantly, Ace had another bite. That's, that's a run. This one was certainly pulling back and was possibly a larger fish. There we go. Oh, that's quite big. Would you like to swap fish by any chance? No? <laughs> there we go. A couple of beautiful estate lake carp. How about that? Good job, mate. Big old carp. <laughs> Love it. If you've spotted signs of fish, then you can just cast your rod straight out, maybe with a chod or helicopter rig. I'll show you these setups a bit later on because that will be presented well over almost any lake bed and you could get yourself a quick bite. If you haven't seen really any signs, then you're gonna try, it's probably best to try and work out where the fish are likely to be by checking the depth or feeling what the lake bed is like. I like to do this with a rod with braid on the reel braid doesn't have any stretch in it so when you chuck the lead in and it hits the bottom you can feel the lead cracking down on the bottom if it's firm or you can feel the lead slowly just come to a stop if the bottom is silty or weedy for example. Now this video is obviously going to talk about fishing in heavy silt like we're faced with on this particular lake and what you'll find is if you chuck a lead out and it's silty the lead will just sort of come to a stop. It won't go thud when you feel the lead going down to the deck. It will just stop. Sometimes you can't even feel it hit the bottom. This is either because the water is very, very shallow or because it's quite silty. The next thing that will help you understand what you're fishing over is once you've thrown the lead out, then drag it back towards you slowly across the bottom, putting your rod to one side and dragging that lead back. If it rattles, then you're not in silt. You're on something like gravel or um, some sort of stone or something. If it's like dunk, 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 as you drag it back towards you. If it drags back very smoothly and you don't really feel anything, it's just gentle resistance and it just glides back in. You're probably on some soft uh, silt. If you happen to throw your lead out, you try and feel it down, you're not really able to. Then you go to pull it and it's like, it's stuck, it's plugged in the bottom. You're probably faced with thick, gloopy silt. This is where you're gonna to have to look at your rigs to make sure you're gonna present your bait properly. If you imagine that you've thrown your lead in and it gets plugged, it's like stuck in the bottom and you're trying to yank it, it's probably because that lead has hit that silt and just plugged right deep inside it. If you use a conventional rig, that could result in your rig being pulled inside that silt as well, meaning your hook maybe is snagged in some leaves or dirt on the bottom, and your hook bait isn't really visible to a passing fish. This is where a helicopter rig comes in. A helicopter rig is named as such because as you cast out, the rig can sort of spin around the line, a bit like a propeller on a helicopter or something. Uh, but essentially, what this rig enables you to do is fish in areas where the silt on the bottom is very, very soft and squidgy because this, the, the, the lead can go into it, disappear quite a lot. Um, even if it went that far into the silt, your hook bait and your rig is still presented on top of it. When you're setting one of these rigs up, you can take the uh, chod sleeve and the no trace bead, which is at the top, and you could push it further up your line or leader to allow your rig to slide further up. So if you're casting around it, it feels kind of soft when the lead hits the bottom. Maybe it's a little bit stuck, but it's not you know, plugged deeply. Then you might just want to have your rig set like that. Just 
a couple of inches above the lead. However, if you're fishing somewhere where it's slimy and deep silt on the bottom and it, you chuck it in and it's just stuck in the silt, then you're probably best off sliding that top bead right up further away from the lead, meaning that your rig can slide up and definitely won't end up being pulled into the silt on the bottom. That evening, the guys packed up and headed home as Ace had school the next day. Big thanks to him and his dad, Lee, for having us down at this beautiful estate lake. The sun's gone down now and the day's coming to an end. Thankfully, uh, Ace managed to catch one more fish before he had to go home. Him and his dad seemed pretty pleased about that. And I was impressed too. It was a 20 pound, uh, 20 pound common which is a good fish for, for, for any time of year, let alone a freezing winter's day like today. But yeah, uh, once they had headed off, I put a few more spawns of bait out to try and keep the fish in the area. They're clearly feeding, so I might as well give them a bit of bait to keep them in the swim, you know, through the night. And yeah, got the rods back out. I flicked a uh, chod rig down the margin underneath the tree down there. So it looks like a pretty tasty area. And uh, yeah, Ace said that he'd caught a few down there in the past. So yep, all three rods are out for the night and I'm hopeful that I can get myself a good one before the end of the session. This is what we were after. I think this is going to be a big one. This lake seems to have quite a lot of very small commons in it, about three to five pounds. But this doesn't feel like a three pounder. On the rigs that I've been using on this session, my chosen bait has been a wafter, or wafter as you pronounce it if you live in a certain other part of England, further north, I believe. Anyway, um, we won't have that debate in this video. Um, but yeah, a wafter or wafter hook bait is basically a bait with neutral buoyancy. It's, it doesn't pop itself up like that, and nor does it just sort of sit on the bottom. It sort of wafts a little bit um, up above the hook. And I just find when you're fishing in quite soft silt, the fish find it easily. It doesn't get lost on the bottom, but it also doesn't pop itself right up. Because I find sometimes when I'm, when I'm fishing over silt and I'm introducing pellets, maybe some corn, crushed up boilies, the fish will really grub around in the soft stuff on the bottom. And if, you're, if you've got a bait that's popped up right above that, they almost, they almost don't notice it. They're sort of going down on the bottom, digging deep in the silt, and the pop-up's up here. And sometimes it just doesn't really work. Uh, so a wafter hook bait is just my go-to uh, sort of, yeah, choice when I'm fishing on a silty place and I'm feeding uh, like a spod mix over the top. Alternatively, and especially if you're fishing for big fish, maybe you're only feeding boilies to try and get the fish sort of moving around between mouthfuls, just having one boilie swimming along another one, then you could use a pop-up. A lot of the time when I'm fishing for big fish and it's silty or weedy, then I will actually use a chod rig. A chod rig works quite similar to a helicopter rig. The only difference is you have a short rig of maybe just an inch or two long, a stiff, a stiff hook link and a pop-up bait. So if I chucked a chod rig out into uh, an area where there's light weeds on the bottom, it will come to rest perfectly on top, the uh, popped up bait sitting proud, making sure that the hook doesn't get stuck in any uh, leaves or weeds on the bottom. I really like using chod rigs uh, in conjunction with a scattering of boilies when I'm trying to target bigger fish on a venue. It just seems to really work to, uh, to pick out like the larger ones. Now one last thing to think about when you're fishing in silk is I hear a lot of anglers recommending that you cast in and if it's quite silty you should pop the lead out of the silt, sort of drag it back towards you uh, to apparently present your rig better. Now, I don't doubt that that works a percentage of the time, and I certainly wouldn't say that their information is, is wrong. But quite a lot of times when I've done that, and I've chucked the lead in, and I've just pulled it back a little bit to pop the lead out of the silt, I've actually found that my hook has just dragged into a stick, or dragged into a leaf. 
and that kind of ruins your chances of catching because you might do that at the beginning of the session, pop the lead back, drag it a little bit back and your hook's just buried in something. And no matter how much a fish tries to feed on your bait, the hook's snagged and the point is covered and masked and you're not gonna catch. So if you're really paranoid um, about the hook point getting stuck in something or if the lake you're fishing, there's tons of leaves and twigs and horrible stuff on the bottom, take your hook and try putting a little PVA bag, a small mesh PVA bag, or I don't know, of some micro pellet, uh, crushed up boilie or something. That can help ensure that when your leg goes down and your rig lands, it comes down and settles on top of the weeds or, or soft silt and uh, yeah, helps avoid your hook point getting caught on, on anything. You can also use a bit of uh, PVA foam squeezed around um, if you'd prefer. It's kicking off this morning. I've got one sort of scraper double common in the net. <laughs> Flick the rod back out, it's gone again. I like it when um, things go well and you get a few bites. Winter fishing is often, often includes quite a lot of blanking, but not this session. Well, the night was relatively quiet, only a couple of liners to wake me from my sleep. And then this morning, this one tore off. Uh, another bite on the wafters and helicopter rigs. Pretty much the perfect way to uh, combat silty venues. That combination of hook bait and rig just seems to work wherever I go where it's, uh, where it's soft on the lake bed. 